Dungeons and Dragons admits to some major mistakes with OGL 1.2. It's just dumb. Dungeons and Dragons also pointed out that over 10,000 players had submitted feedback over OGL 1.2. However, we know that a ton of players have unsubscribed from D&D Beyond, five figures worth with one source saying at least 40,000 players have unsubscribed from D&D Beyond over the OGL backlash. Clearly, a large percentage of fans are unwilling to work with Wizards of the Coast or simply don't believe that the company can be trusted to do the right thing with their feedback. That has to be a major concern for Wizards at this point. The tweet, posted to the D&D Beyond account, acknowledged that a lot more work was needed for the OGL 1.2. Of particular note, D&D stated that the VTT policy missed the mark, and that it's clear that focusing on banning animations and VTTs was the wrong focus. Now, we're to the point that Dungeons & Dragons is focused on saying the right things to the community, which is good because its previous tactic of trying to strong-arm creators with NDAs and creating a rumor whirlwind that ultimately created a, well, frankly, just narrative of dishonesty by Wizards was clearly a disastrous effect. However, Wizards has some things that it really wants to get from this new OGL, and it'll be interesting to see how superfluous things like animations and VTTs get conceded to show that they're really listening to the community. Now, Dungeons & Dragons is clearly a brand in crisis, and it'll be interesting to see how it tries to recover in the coming months. Will it attempt to let things blow over, quietly putting out books like Keys from the Golden Vault, and hoping that this new movie will restore some enthusiasm amongst D&D fans and the wider community? Or will it actively try to rebuild trust with the many creators who now look upon Wizards as an unreliable and dishonest partner, a company that they can't trust to rely upon for basing their business and their income on? Frankly, it's, well, it's too early to say. Dungeons & Dragons is clearly saying the right things, but words are cheap, especially in this economy, and it's actions that are far more important. In other news, Dungeons & Dragons is putting out its first book amid the ongoing OGL firestorm. But is no press for keys from the Golden Vault better than bad press? We all know that Wizards of the Coast would much rather be talking about the upcoming Dungeons & Dragons movie, the new 1D&D edition, or its slate of 2023 D&D releases, rather than focusing on the attempted rework of the open game license. But the fanbase is still passionately defending the OGL 1.0a and providing feedback about Wizards' current OGL 1.2 draft which includes a vague, hateful, and harmful content clause, and of course, the deauthorization of OGL 1.0a. Now, a survey for the OGL 1.2 draft is still open for another week, and a follow-up draft, which supposedly will be incorporating all the feedback that we're giving Wizards, will be released this Feb. Now, of course, Wizards is also releasing its first 2023 Dungeons & Dragons book in February, Keys from the Golden Vault, a heist-themed adventure anthology. Now, typically, Wizards starts to market these books a few weeks before publication, but they've been silent so far. Likely because every tweet, every live stream, and every video they post is full of OGL comments, and I'm using the phrase comments generously. But Keys from the Golden Vault is not being delayed. In fact, this week, Wizards posted the covers and description for the anthology on a retailer support website. The main cover shows two adventurers descending down a rope as a closet guards a crypt or a vault of some kind. The alternate cover is a door to a literal golden vault, stylized similar to those Hydro 74 covers. Of course, the alternate covers will only be available in hobby stores. The retailer page also includes a description of the book, revealing that it contains 13 standalone adventures made for levels 1 to 11 characters. Each heist apparently has more than one path to success, and also the Golden Vault isn't a place. It's an organization that plans heists and recruits PCs to run them. So usually, the covers for a D&D book like this is revealed as part of a marketing push, with the media, such as myself, getting the chance to attend a press event where they listen to the product head and a few of the adventure writers talk about the book. There's some art reveals, and the events are usually meant as a way to get the press interested in the book so they can write articles and make videos and things like that. 
that means that dropping the covers and the description on a retailer support site is, well, it's pretty unusual. I'll also just point out that this has to be pretty disappointing to the writers of the adventures themselves. These people are probably freelancers who have used the OGL and the DM skill to publish previous D&D adventures and other D&D works, and these anthologies have traditionally been a great showcase for new voices in the tabletop RPG industry. That's all been overshadowed by Wizards' attempt to kneecap the OGL and really just kind of puts a damper on what should be a celebration for these uh, upcoming and new voices. So anyways, hopefully we'll get some more official information about Keys from the Golden Vault sometime soon. The book itself is supposed to come out in less than a month on February 21st. So are you surprised by the quiet cover release? Let us know in the comments section and don't forget to like and subscribe to the character sheet.